Okay, we're in a good mood today, right? Right. Cash for clunkers, cash for resvans. I got a beautiful new car, and the only reason I'm here right now is because my resvan came through and gave me a credit, put a down payment on a brand new high mileage car, and I'm zooming around all over the place. Rushed over here to do the news, so welcome back. I am Paul Domain on this wonderful Thursday, August 6th, with this roundup of news from Indian Country on the Native News Update. These stories and others can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com and or IndianCountryTV.com. Here are the stories for the day from the wires and other Native News sources. Both men charged with killing a fellow American Indian Movement member 33 years ago are scheduled to stand trial on October 6th in Rapid City, South Dakota in federal court. Richard Marshall and John Graham pled not guilty to charges they committed or aided and abetted the December 1975 murder of Anna Mae Pictou Aquash on the Pine Ridge Reservation. An appeals court last week upheld the dismissal of one of three alternative murder charges against Graham. U.S. Attorney Marty Jackley says the government is still weighing its options in relationship to the alternative charge that was dropped. If prosecutors don't try Graham on the two remaining counts against him, the state could do it as well. Eighteen months after settling a contentious legal battle that challenged the quality of its products, a tribally owned company that makes protective gear for soldiers says it's done playing defense. Sioux Manufacturing Corporation said it has successfully completed an independent audit and bought $2 million worth of new equipment, steps aimed at repairing the damage to its image caused by the lawsuit and expanding its non-military business. The sky is the limit now, said Jeff Cooper, Sioux Manufacturing, uh, Manufacturing's quality manager, as long as we drum up some business. Sioux Manufacturing paid $1.9 million in December 2007 to settle the case but admitted no wrongdoing. Federal prosecutors said the company's cloth underwent ballistic safety uh, testing during their investigation and during the test passed all of them. Tribal uh, contributions in Arizona from tribally run casinos are down 9.4% from the same quarter a year ago. The Arizona Department of Gaming said that tribal contributions to the state from gaming revenue will be approximately $23.5 million. There are currently 22 casinos in the state that offer slots, table games, keno, and off-track paramutual betting. Tribes send contributions to the state uh, Arizona Benefits Fund every three months. The gaming dollar breakdowns include $11.7 million for instructional improvement, $5.8 million for the Trauma Emergency Services Fund, $2.1 million to help operate the Arizona Department of Gaming, and $1.6 million for the Arizona Wildlife Conservation Fund. State tourism is slated to get $1.6 million and $475,000 is headed to, to problem gambling education and treatment. Work is underway on an energy pipeline on the Fort Berthold Reservation near Mandary, North Dakota. The Aero Pipeline Gathering System for oil, water, and gas will cover about 18 miles in the Mandary area. Fred Fox, administrator of the three affiliated tribes energy department, says the tribe is working with two companies on the project. Fox says oil activity on the reservation is picking up. He says several rigs are drilling in the Twin Buttes, Partial, and Mandary areas, and more are likely to be drilled before the end of this year. Four-inch long sturgeon frolicked in a hatchery tank, comically flipping into their backs to feed, then wriggling right side up. Wriggling right side up. <laughs> Barely a year old, they looked ancient. Long snouts, shark Shark-like tails in the sturgeon's boning armor hinted at the species' prehistoric origins, which date back some 150 million years ago. They're mysterious, beautiful creatures, said Sue Ireland, Fish and Wildlife Director for the Katune Tribe of Idaho, the hatchery's operator. It's important that we do everything in our power to help them survive. As part of aggressive plans to keep the Katune River's white sturgeon population from sliding into an extinction, the tribe has crafted a habitat restoration plan for 55 miles of the river. 
The habitat work will help young hatchery sturgeon survive after they've been released into their native waters and also benefit the remaining wild sturgeon population. In the 1970s, an estimated 7,000 white sturgeon lurked in the river's cool green depths. Only 800 to 1,000 adults remain today. The Midwest's first Hard Rock Hotel and Casino is set to open this week after a $155 million extend, uh, expansion by the Cherokee Nation, which will operate the gaming and entertainment resort. The rebranding of the facility from the Cherokee Casino to the Hard Rock Hotel took two years. The new Hard Rock opened up just outside of Tulsa in the suburb of Katusa. It will be only the seventh of its kind in the world. The resort features more than 125,000 square feet of gaming space, nightclubs, and more than $2 million in rock music memorabilia. Oh yeah, memories of rock music on the wall that are on display throughout the new Hard Rock Hotel. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank our underwriters for helping us with this broadcast and you sticking with us despite all the little stuttering and things that go on here. Thanks for showing up and come again soon. Have a great day.